Hello, everyone. Welcome to Council Room 2022. Satellite now. Hey, and today's panel, we're recording this on December 18th, is Doctor Who and Pop Culture. So if, if anything comes up after December 18th, we're not going to talk about it because unlike doc, the doctor, we do not travel in time and space. Let's meet our other panelists. Uh, first, Michael Zeka, can you introduce yourself and uh, your connection to Doctor Who? Uh, Michael Zeka, frequent panelist at Console Room and just been a fan since 81 or thereabouts, uh, first in the Denver area and then here. Um, nothing fancy from there. <laughs> and our other panelist today is Diana Tan. Diana, just tell us a little about, bit about yourself. Hi, I'm Diana. Um, last few years I've been panelists on um, Console Room and uh, doing also work with uh, one of our big panels that we do is is uh, TC Trek Trivia, Wobbly Wobbly Edition Saturdays at Console Room. So we're gonna just talk about all these pop culture references to Doctor Who, all the way going back to, I don't know, the 80s probably. Uh, Michael, let's go with your first reference. What do you have for us? Um, I'm gonna throw out one that actually dates back to the 80s. <laughs> hmm. um, Diane Duane used to drop Doctor Who references in her Star Trek novels. Ah, yes. At Pocket Books. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit. Yeah. Another, uh, an uh, and another more recent novelist that has been doing that sort of thing, uh, Mary Robinette Cowell, and I hope I'm not botching her name, um, sci-fi fantasy writer, did a series of books known as The Glamorous Histories. It's like magic in the period of Jane Austen. <laughs> And apparently she worked a different doctor into each book as a character. Oh, like they basically had cameos in, in each of her books. <laughs> well, I mean, with magic, that includes time travel. So I could yeah. see a cameo from the doctor in those books. Um, so that, that is, that's awesome. Hey, Diana, do you have a reference for us today? Uh, the ones that I can remember offhand quickly enough would be, of course, from our The Good Omens um, miniseries on Amazon Prime with David Tennant. Uh, there was quite a bit, a few of them, as you can all imagine. Uh, like the fourth Doctor's tie was shown. Uh, there was uh, some kids saying exterminate and just a couple little uh, books of things on Gallifrey and things like that. Just little if you knew or if you were listening to it, watching it, and you would probably catch them. Yeah. Um, there's probably a YouTube video of all the Doctor Who Easter eggs in Good Omens somewhere. Just put that in your search bar, and they'll probably, someone will probably literally pop lost up with track that of one. counting yeah. when I was watching yes. it. <laughs> uh, now it's my turn, and I'm going to one of my favorite shows from the 2010s. That is Leverage. I like a good heist and good con, uh, con movie and show. And leverage was one of us made. Um, I'm going to go to the Ten Little Grifters job, where the one of the clients said she used to work at a law firm of McGann, McCoy, and Baker. Yep, and uh, that's where that came from. Dean Dean Devlin, and you'll see a lot of Doctor Who references in all his shows. You know, uh, the librarians too, and the librarian uh, movies. You'll see Doctor Who references in those because Devlin is a fanboy. And if they ever go out of the UK for a showrunner, I'd love to see Dean Devlin showrun Doctor Who because I think he'd come from it as a fanboy, and I think it'd be a really good, good type of show if he ran ran the show. That's a that's I mean you'll see references to Doctor Who. I think um, they've used they use Baker and McCoy and McCann as as aliases. Um, Hardison, the whole thing is Hardison, the Aldous Hodge character is a big Doctor Who fan. He's the one that makes the aliases. So you'll see Doctor Who aliases in that show. So Michael, let's go on to your next uh, reference. Okay, so back in the early 80s, there was this lovely series called The Young Ones, um, featuring a number of actors who have been on Doctor Who since. One of whom was Alexi Sale. A few years before he did Revelation of the Daleks, there's an episode of The Young Ones where he pulls a cactus out of a, cock, uh, a flower pot, sticks it to his chest, and runs around the apartment saying, exterminate, exterminate. 
those guys were pretty wild. So I could yeah. see them doing that in that show. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. Um, and the comedies, you know, comedy, let's go to comedy. Comedy always has good references. Uh, I mean, Community did a whole fictional show of Inspector Space Time, which is basically a ripoff of Doctor Who. They just didn't want to reference Doctor Who in that show. Um, but that was one of the more brilliant things. Well, Community was not one of the more brilliant shows. So, you know, that was, Danny Pudi was just funny with that stuff. You know, getting introduced to that from his girlfriend, that was pretty funny. And it just kept going throughout the show after it got introduced. So that was kind of a running gag, a, a lot like Big Bang Theory. I mean, I mean, Stuart dressing as the fourth doctor, um, the, the, the Doctor Who posters in the comic shop, things like that. Um, uh, they did a good job referencing more than DC superheroes. And you have to look a little bit sometimes, but there's some Doctor Who references in that, in that show. Uh, Diana, do you have a, another reference for us? I'm looking at a list here. Um, I found there's one from Sesame Street in 2014. Oh, uh, yes. Numericon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Where a character was dressed up as the fourth doctor and with the TARDIS and appearing to, appearing along with two Cybermen and Daleks. Saying, enumerate, enumerate. There you go. <laughs> there was also a really lovely William Shatner as Captain Kirk Muppet. Nice. Who has Shatner's cadence down and everything. And lots of the Sesame Street characters were cosplaying as different superheroes and sci-fi characters and stuff. It was really yeah. a fun episode. How about you, uh, Michael? Where's your next one? Okay. Well, you know, there was this little um, sitcom that Stephen Moffat made years ago called Coupling. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Pretty sure there was yes. a Dalek in the comic shop and many other Doctor Who references all uh, through. From the 2000s, yes. Oh, yeah. The, or the 90s and 2000s. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he, he also made this little thing called Doctor Who and the Curse of Fatal Death. I don't know if you've heard of it. <laughs> Uh, going going back to the librarians again, um, this is a like an in in the universe reference. Uh, as, if you know the the plot of the librarians, they go around collecting artifacts that that are scientific or supernatural in nature. And the last episode, they went to the time travel department, and there's two things in the two big things in the time travel department the delorean and a tardis and it just goes ah it's real you know it's real in universe in the librarian's universe is part of the doctor who universe and i thought that, hey that's really cool you know that's not only a reference but saying hey this is part of our universe here in the librarian's universe so that was pretty. That was a pretty interesting thing that that uh, Dean did. With that. Hey, sticking with the uh, sitcom realm for a moment, I've got a couple of others, and some of them go back a little ways. So um, I have to admit, I've not watched a lot of this show, but once in the late seven. I think late seventies, because it was before I saw a Doctor Who episode, I was at my grandparents' house near Philly and I was watching an episode of The Goodies and a police box flew by in a scene, you know, <laughs> spinning through. And I didn't know what it was at the time. And a couple of years later, I'm like, oh. <laughs> but but the funny thing is you, in the old Who, you never really saw the police box spinning. You just would see it take off yeah. and land so that must have been the first that might have been the first reference to the TARDIS actually moving maybe not just not just uh showing up in some place and disappearing from that place yeah 
so that, we that could did, be an interest. We, we did got to kind that of get a little bit of the, the TARDIS in motion. I think was it in Fury of the Deep, Fury from the Deep. So we did get a yeah, reference yeah. like that in the Troughton era, but yeah, yeah. kind of yeah. hovering over the ocean or something. And yeah, yeah but it wasn't. It's just hovering. It wasn't really. Yeah, a little, a little bit of movement, but but more than they really would really seen before that. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then again, still on the sitcom thing, actually the most recent episode of South Park post COVID, the return of COVID, wow. uh, Rabbi Cartman is at the church running a foundation against time travel meeting. And there's a dude that's like, wait, isn't this Doctor Who convention? And he's dressed up and he's doing exterminate sounds and all this. <laughs> Speaking of South Park, another yes. episode <laughs> a while ago, apparently. Uh, basically, it was called Funnybot. Um, it was designed by oh yeah, and uh, Funnybot was designed by the Germans to prove that they were funny. Mm -hmm. uh, they were obviously based off the dialects, and oh, in lieu of the much. death ray, even even shouting exterminate at one point. Yeah, they very much did Daleks, and that one I'd forgotten about them. So thanks that's because for... that's because the new one is yeah. <laughs> was yeah. right there fresh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and again, also on the sitcom line, um, Family Guy has done a few Doctor Who references, mm -hmm. famously oh, in Blue yeah, Harvest, yeah. which is their Star yeah. Wars parody. When the Millennium Falcon first jumps to hyperspace, it's the Tom Baker opening credit sequence. Yep. It's like, wow, hyperspace is really freaky. And then more recently, the, one of their cutaway gags in the last couple of years starred David Tennant as the 10th yes. Doctor in yep. an episode called Doctor Who Farted. Yes. <laughs> I was not happy with that part, but yeah. whatever. Yeah. It's, but Tennant played along, so hey, he was in a Family Guy. He played episode. along. But yeah. it's, uh, it's just typical Farland music. Well, jokes. yeah, it's very typical McFarland jokes, absolutely. But yeah, and uh, another one, um, and maybe this is straying out of comedy a little bit. Rick and Morty, and obviously Rick and Morty is oh, primarily definitely. riffing on Back to the Future. You know, they right. they really kind of started off as a parody of, you know. Marty and so on, uh, but uh, and Doc Brown, but obviously it's got kind of a Doctor Who feel to it at times. They actually reference Doctor Who quite a bit, usually disparagingly. They they also disparage the notion of time travel in the show. They jump between universes all the time, but they do, they stay away from time travel except for one episode. But there was one episode where Rick was getting a bit exasperated at the end, and he was saying a lot of weird things and one of those i'm doctor who up in this m effer <laughs> but also for me if you listen to the rick and morty theme song yes it is clearly a stylistic homage to the doctor uh -huh. who theme yep yeah it, it it's yeah <sighs> okay let's uh Let's see. I already covered that one. We had Simpsons. Oh, lots of Simpsons. Oh, there's a lot of Simpsons, Simpsons. references, and it's usually it's all the fourth Tom doctor. Baker. Yes. Yeah. Everything, because that's he is the most recognizable yeah. for that classic and series. Well, and also for the writing staff at the Simpsons, I think yep. they are of that age that they grew up with Tom Baker. Conan O'Brien, early... Weinstein, and and yeah. all these guys from this from exactly. the 70s. Well, yeah. and you have to remember, right. the Simpsons did start off in the late 80s. <laughs> God, yeah, but, I can't believe it's been on this long. They're they're all, I know. mean, all the writers grew, were growing up in the mid seventies. It's yeah, you know. they, they were part of that early PBS phase, like like I was. Right. Um. The, the two episodes of The Simpsons that really stand out for me with the Tom Baker Doctor were Treehouse of Horror ten, where the collector has a bunch of celebrities wrapped in plastic, like Lucy Lawless and uh -huh. Tom Baker, <laughs> and uh, Sideshow Bob's Last Gleaming, where. There's a scene with the mayor down in a Dr. Strangelove style underground bunker, and they call in the esteemed representatives of television. And the esteemed representatives of television are Krusty the Clown, Bumblebee Guy, Kent Brockman, and Tom Baker. <laughs> and Tom Baker has been a head in a jar for oh. Futurama. Of course. Of course. He's the only one. Although I have a t shirt with like all the doctor's heads in jars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a great Futurama episode. Yeah. yeah, I mean that's a that's a classic. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean going to to Marvel, I mean Agents of Shield. Uh, Fitz was a big fanboy 
Doctor Who. He had mm. he oh, had a, a TARDIS on his desk. He uh, he him and Gemma. Uh, Gemma said Alonzi a couple times um, when they were and they were talking. First time they'd see what well, first thing they'd like to see when stranded on an island. Gemma Simmons says the TARDIS. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. it's like uh, Fitz and Simmons were big Doctor Who people, and that's I mean that. I mean, looking at their characters, you can see they're British and nerdy. You know, that's a that's a you know a thing you know that, that it makes sense that they'd be big Doctor Who fans those two, and of course we've had some of the Doctor Who actors in the Marvel universe now too. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I, I, I it, this is straying a little bit from our topic, about. but at that at the regeneration scene with Matt Smith and that image of Amy, it's really telling when you stop and think that both actors were actually bald and wearing wigs. <laughs> Karen because she'd just been filming Guardians of the Galaxy right. and so on. That's yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. But uh but speaking of you know Doctor Who actors in I still sometimes get nightmares thinking about David Tennant in Jessica Jones. Mm-hmm. That's still great. Oh man. Mm-hmm. <sighs> well I, getting... I will not go watch the first season again. I you know yeah. I'll I'll go watch other first other I will not watch the first season of Jessica Jones. It's just, the only season back. I would love to rewatch. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's just. Well, getting maybe getting back to coming. our topic, yeah. um, uh, I got yeah. another old one. I know we've said mostly 80s and onwards, but I've got another from the 60s. Mm-hmm. So, again, a series I've not watched a lot of episodes of The Avengers. And I'm uh, not talking Marvel, I'm talking Dina Rigg. Emma Peel, and, yeah, John, uh, Dina Rigg, and, and and Patrick John, McNee, and so on. Patrick, yeah. Um, in the late 80s, early 90s, the Avengers was airing at 4 or 5 a.m. Um, repeats on a Denver station. And I, at the time, I was working nights. And so I would sometimes catch part of an episode as I was drifting off to sleep. And I have a memory of one episode where Diana Rigg, as Emma Peel, is undercover working in a department store, stocking Rolly Kendallics on shelves. <laughs> So this was at the height of the Terry Nation Dalek craze back in the 60s. So pretty cool. Yep. Um, there's, I mean, there's uh, Vicar of Dibley. Mm-hmm. Uh, when, when she gets married in the last episode, the Bridesmaids were dressed, dressed as the 10th Doctor and two Daleks. Nice. Well, and of yeah. course, French and Saunders. So again, Don French oh, was definitely. Vicar Dibley. Yeah. There was a French and Saunders sk- skit yeah. involving oh, the two of them right. playing like Silurians or something. And it was clearly filmed on the set of the trial scene from the trial of a Time Lord. Uh, they had somebody in the Inquisitor's costume and, you know, Time Lords and all kinds of different Doctor Who aliens and stuff. And they were basically bad extras who kept interrupting the scene and yeah 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 um okay so there is a a series of doctor who references in another big classic sci-fi franchise and that is star trek um besides the fact that a few actors across i'm specifically talking doctor who references the first one that i noticed and i remember this one and i looked up more details on it recently the first season next generation finale the neutral zone uh they uh-huh. have thawed some people from late 20th early 21st century and trying to help them come terms with things and they look up a, a genealogy chart for one of the characters and in that genealogy chart you see that william hartnell is married to patrick troughton <laughs> and John Pertwee is married to Tom Baker, and Peter Davison spell- is married to Colin Baker, but they misspelled Peter Davison's yep. name, yep. but apparently they corrected it on the Blu-ray release. Yes, they did. They because so they remastered that's commitment. able to remaster it and and yep. get rid of that D. And then later in the series, in the episode I Borg that introduced Hugh mm-hmm. of Borg, the Argolis oh. cluster is mentioned. Yes. So this, of course, is a Leisure Hive reference. Yep. Yes. And uh, finally, there is an ap- episode of Enterprise that involves a time ship. And that time ship, this is an episode called Future Tense, that time ship is bigger on the inside than the outside. 
and it has round things on the walls. Yep. I, so, yeah. So that's and since we're we're uh, we're referencing um, nerds and things like that, uh, McGee from uh, from NCIS. There's an episode in 2009 called Power Down, where he McGee walks into this uh, container space and it's it was really big inside and he compares it to the TARDIS and he put the TARDIS to the Nozo and the Nozo goes Doctor Who? Who watches that? And, and in typical the Nozo fashion. <laughs> so okay, I now think th there's other references of Doctor mm -hmm. Who in going throughout you know throughout uh, NCIS with McGee because okay. McGee is that kind of guy at least until he gets married there are Doctor Who pop culture references in several films as well mm -hmm. uh, first one yeah. I'm going to bring up is Looney Tunes back in action, action in which a Peter Cushing era Dalek appears and this, I think, was one of those cases where they had kind of like negotiated things out with the nation state, but not BBC or vice versa. I can't remember. It was kind of weird. Um, there also is a reference in the Lego Batman movie. So, um, okay. So I'm right, remember, trying to remember back to the Superman movies. Was that the Forbidden Zone, the big flat thing that General Zod was in? So the Forbidden Zone appears uh, in... That's the, name uh, right? no, the... Uh... Well, God. zero something. No, yeah. No. Well, either way, whatever it is, it, it it's a plot point in the Lego Batman movie that Batman ends up there for a bit, and and or no, the Joker ends up there for a bit, and there's a lot of classic villains in there that he interacts with: the Wicked Witch of the West, Sauron, British robots voiced by Nicholas Briggs, <laughs> Phantom Zone. Phantom Zone. Phantom, that's it. Yeah, the yeah, Phantom yeah. Zone. Yeah. So there, there's got they were they were the multicolored Daleks from Victory of the Daleks, essentially, but done in Lego style. And they were voiced by Nicholas Briggs, but they were specifically referred to as British robots. They were never referred to as Daleks, probably because they didn't want to have to negotiate things with the nation estate. <laughs> that's that's what uh, it, it all whenever Daleks aren't called Daleks, it all comes down to Terry Nation's estate. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. <laughs> And of course, yeah, Lego had already been partnering with BBC doing uh, Lego Dimensions, Doctor Who levels and things. And so they kind of had that partnership already established. Um, so that was kind of cool. I, I just laughed when suddenly your Nick Briggs starts talking in a Lego Batman movie. It's like, this is great. <laughs> mm. And I think I there's another movie we were discussing before the panel. Maybe one of the others wants to mention that one. What was it? <laughs> oh, Bill uh, and Ted. Bill and Ted, Ted is, a, is just oh. as as what what sh one show called it. Uh, God, I forgot what show it was called it. The Doctor Who ripoff movie. Mm hmm. Yeah, trying time traveling in a phone box, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. With a uh, with a eccentric guy. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm hmm. Rufus is an extractor guy, let me tell you. Yeah. There is. A, a, go ahead. How about uh, back to movies? Well, going mm -hmm. back to Lego, there is a appearance by the TARDIS in the Lego movie, too, the second part. Mm, when uh, Rex Danger Vest is using parts to build his time machine, he uses parts from the DeLorean, he uses parts from H.G. Wells' time machine and the TARDIS to make uh, his own time machine. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Interesting story about the Lego movies as well. Um, in terms of all those things that are built in the movies, the filmmakers actually worked with Lego model shop builders to make sure that everything that they were creating digitally in those movies could actually be built out of real bricks. Yeah. 
That's amazing. That's one of the more amazing things. What, yeah. when I read There's a real movie. attention to detail in those movies. I've talked about the Lego movies in detail in other panels before. If anybody yeah. wants to hit me up on that on the side, I can talk Lego off your ear. <laughs> um, cool. Getting back to our panel, though, um, there is a Doctor <laughs> Who reference in Buffy. I was just going to say that. Oh, yep. And it's one that really astounded me. Back in season six, the episode Smash, Andrew mentions something like he's ever seen every episode of Doctor Who or that he has every Doctor Who box set. And I'm like, how did he manage to see every episode of Doctor Who? This is clearly another universe where they haven't junked all those episodes. Yeah. And before they made, before they made the animated, all the ones that were junked. Yep. <laughs> and, and that they were releasing box sets before we started getting the Blu-ray box sets. They were releasing yeah. DVD box sets. We were just getting individual releases here. Of course, at that time, they were all VHS box sets. And you'd have yeah, like... me too. <laughs> oh, it's like, yeah, that takes up lots of room on your... on your. Yep. Because it was one... It was one tape for the... Maybe two up... Maybe one story on a tape. So it would be six tapes for a season. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. Um, let's go to let's go to one of my favorite ones from 2003. Hmm. A real life show, Top Gear, hmm. where there was a Dalek, the Sixth Doctor, and a Cyberman appearing Dalek. with a Dalek, a Dalek and a Klingon, and a, hmm. and a Klingon, a Mer- Ming the Merciless, and Darth Vader, and it was a Master of the Sea was Master of the Universe was a lap around the test track, racing a modified Honda Civic. The Dalek <laughs> could not get in the car, so he exterminated the other drivers, with the exception of the Klingon and the Doctor, who had apparently fled beforehand and they were not present. The Cyberman was actually was uh, eventually declared the winner by uh, by the hosts. So, if I could find that episode somewhere, I'd like to watch it. Just uh, old so... episodes of Top Gear is actually on Amazon Prime. Oh, cool! What two ninety nine? Oh, that'd be cool to watch that. And that is not the first time that Daleks and cars have appeared in something together. Ah, okay. So um, we had uh, the band KLF rebranded themselves temporarily as the Time Lords and did a cover of Gary Glitter's History of Rock and Roll, known as Doctor and the TARDIS. And in the music video, uh, part of their deal with the Time Lords is that the lead singer is apparently an old Ford, (laughs) Ford Time Lord, Ford car, and that car is driving around chasing Daleks, cardboard Daleks, and running them over in the music video. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> it's amazing you know as, as i look at this list it's amazing how many uh video games mm-hmm. have uh have references to doctor who you, know, you don't yeah. think of video games as a place where you can find your references to doctor who but there are uh, a whole bunch. there are animal That's... crossing yes. uh, new horizon I- dream islands from with doctor who <laughs> references all over I also have the TARDIS and a few things of Dr. Home My Island yeah, that I created, yes. but yeah. Yeah. Stuff you, I mean, stuff that's, that's in the game already too, that you don't create like, uh, like once again, Lego. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. The weeping angels are found in Lego three, Lego Batman three beyond Batman game. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's like, Yeah, I know there's a long list online of all the different video games that yeah. have Doctor Who references off in a TARDIS yeah. of some sort, sometimes as a portal in the game or so forth. Yeah. But Weeping Angels uh, appear, and mm-hmm. I, I think that's a good good thing to appear in a game because of the, the time travel and the teleportation energy that the weeping angels have that'd be an excellent thing to have in a video game to go from portal to portal basically where you don't know where you're going to land too yeah when you come in contact with the weeping angel so that's a that's a that's a good thing to have in a video game with with levels and things like that i mean kudos to the people that put them in there yeah i mean it's a it's a real the real um cool real um not cool a real smart way to move in in a video game 
Um, there, in addition to the Time Lords Doctrine, the TARDIS, there are other music references out there as well, and I'm sure there's more than I know of. John Pertwee, of course, famously did a song called I Am the Doctor, which is quite good, actually. And didn't Fraser Hines do one involving Daleks or something at some point? Am I misremembering that? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. That's what Google's for. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you another one, uh, just a totally random one you may not be familiar with, but and I think it was late 80s, I was watching an episode of Jeopardy, uh, and the category was hairstyling. And I got this answer right, and I think Peter Haining is responsible for me knowing this answer. Okay, uh, the, the clue was, this famous hairstylist did hair designs for Doctor Who in the early 1960s. Who is cool. Fidel Sassoon? Ah, he he did some of the hairstyles back in the Hartnell era. Yeah. So, just like um, God, didn't um, Ridley Scott start off as like a special effects guy at BBC? Oh. <laughs> I mean, it's weird where some of these connections are. Oh, in fact, um, Ron Thornton that founded foundation imaging that was the special effects house that did the cgi on babylon 5 the first few years it was on the air started off doing model effects for doctor who like seven back in the 70s when he was a young man um, there's uh i mean jeopardy i had a whole but has always you know once i'm sure they've done a lot more three since four, the revival but this three, was back times towards year. the cancellation that this happened so i was i was impressed let me turn off the sound on this one so i'm looking at this uh, on the internet here and they said like the my little pony friendship of magic one of the ponies called time turner has an hourglass it's like that's more harry potter but also carried a fob watch but again still harry potter to me than over doctor who <laughs> Well, it depends on whose memories were in the fob watch. That's true. But it was just called, and it's time turner. It's just like, okay, whatever. I would not say that. Rugrats. Mm -hmm. um, I think there's a lot of, you kind of miss them and you catch them, but you'll, a lot of stores have like, whatever they'll see, you'll see a little dollar because they're just quick Easter eggs that, that people might blink and not notice. And some people like us would be like, hey, cool. And then forget about it when you have to do a panel like this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. I'm trying to. There was something with the expanse I saw. Yeah. There's a talk show in the United States that's done a lot of Doctor Who references over the years. Oh, are we talking about our good friend television's Craig Ferguson? <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> yes. Always had a, they're, they're, I was say, always had a TARDIS on his desk. Did a cold open yeah. song and dance number with uh, Matt Smith. Um, interviewed so many Doctor Who I mean, stars: Matt Smith, yeah, Karen Gillan. They were in the U.S. for ten seconds. Yeah, they they'd come to L.A. to be on with Ferguson. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And of course, he interviewed Peter Capaldi on there several years before Capaldi became the Doctor, because he and Capaldi were in a band together back in the early eighties. Yeah, Ferguson was the drummer. I, as much but, as World War Z is a horrible, not a very good movie compared for the book. It's like okay, yeah, but he had to name it <laughs> after a book that has nothing to do with the book. Mm -hmm. um, Who died? Capaldi was in there, and he was—I mean, he was a World Health Organization person. Mm -hmm. But in the credits, they just wrote "Who Doctor." As, <laughs> yes. hey, it was just—it was Jeffrey. right after it was like literally right after he was being announced to be the next Doctor. So having it like that was just really kind of funny to see that that's what they how they credited him yeah we use that in jeopardy for uh doctors other roles and and it was, the answer was who doctor <laughs> you yeah. um uh famously several years ago on google maps street view if you go to the earl's court underground station Oh, there yeah. is a police box outside, and I don't know if it still works, but used to be if you clicked on the police box, you'd go inside Matt Smith's TARDIS. 
It's a nice yeah. little tie yeah. on Google Maps. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a that's always a fun one. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, I mean, pop culture. There's Tardises all over the place. It's mm -hmm. it's there's little little library little um, mm -hmm. little libraries that are shaped like Tardises and and people just have Tardises in their front yard just stick in there and i mean that's that's pop culture you know you build your own tardis for god's sake and it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty pretty wild but uh yeah um craig for um karen gillen was always a a a, a frequent guest on, on craig ferguson's show too because mm -hmm. i think I think they like talking with the Scottish accent together and not having anyone really care. <laughs> sure. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, interestingly, with the Late Late Show, of course, Craig Ferguson, when he left, was replaced by James Corden, mm -hmm. who was in two Matt Smith episodes. So, so there's another Doctor Who connection with yep. that show. And, uh, and he, I mean... The Lodger is one of my still one of my favorite Matt Smith episodes. Yep. And well, and not only that, but so then James Corden's character in The Lodger in closing time was named Craig. Yep. Yep. A, a lot of the hosts of the late late show have been named Craig as well. Craig, Craig Ferguson from, uh, replaced Craig Kilborn. Kilborn. Yep. Oh, that's right. Of course, they all replaced Tom Snyder, but um, but yeah, yeah, so it just like makes that Craig connection again. It's just kind of weird. Yeah. Then uh, one of my one of my all time favorites is um, you know when 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 they just pop up you know why where'd that come from I mean it's like you're watching a show like I said you're watching NCIS and all of a sudden oh it's bigger on the inside like the TARDIS I go hmm it's it's like where do these where do the writer I mean you don't think of these writers where, that are doing a police procedural show really having a reference to that and all of a sudden it pops up. So, I mean, in a comedy, you could see a pop up because they, a lot of that stuff is, is pop culture related. But if you see it in a police procedural, um, CSI New York had a famous one where they, someone goes, Paging Doctor Who, you know, in the in the hospital. So, you know, where you know stuff, where's that stuff come up? You know, in a in a police procedural, which is weird. Yeah. One of the clever ways sometimes writers can work in their fandoms is just to name characters after characters oh, from mm -hmm. Doctor yeah. Who too. Oh, definitely. I mean, we used to do that in our role playing games. You know, one of my character was playing it. One of my friends in a sci fi campaign we were playing was playing a character called Marak, which is a reference to Horns of Nymon, of course. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it's, that's an easy enough thing to do. And I'm sure it's been done a lot more than we realize. I mean, that's another. I mean, Supernatural has used Doctor Who references in their in some of their aliases that uh especially um some of the bad people like a kitsune used the Ailey, amy pond as an alias in the girl next door um and that's uh you know there's a cyberman magazine cover um in another episode so but you could see that happening uh in shows like that uh so i mean i mean you know it's a fantasy show so using another fantasy show is wouldn't be unusual so you know as i'm running through the 2000s list <laughs> Um, Brian in in episode 420 of uh -huh. season 7 and Family Guy 
Brian states that ever since weed was legalized, crime is down, productivity is up, and the rating for Doctor Who is through the through roof. The roof. Yes. <laughs> Seth MacFarlane, mm -hmm. what a genius. Yep. I'm going to bring up something that is interesting. So I don't know if you've heard of the Tommy Westfall universe. So Tommy Westfall was a character in the NBC hospital series, St. Elsewhere. Oh, that's and right. The, he's, uh, an, he's an autistic West. boy in right. the finale of the series. You're kind of made to think that the entire series has been in his head all this time. However, because of crossovers that St. Elsewhere did with other shows and crossovers that sh those shows did with other shows and so on and so on and so on, there's a vast majority of television programming from the UK and the US that are all within one shared universe known as the Tommy Westfall universe. And that includes right. Doctor Who and all of its spinoffs. And I will ah. tell you that some of the connections between some of the shows, there's a lot that are all Richard Belzer's fault because he's played <laughs> the same character on about 20 different television shows, including The X-Files and Sesame Street. <laughs> yep. yeah, uh, that, that one started in, in Homicide Life on the Streets. Is Homicide where, Life on the Street, that was on a bunch of Law and Order spinoffs. He, he was on here. SBU f up to uh, season 14. Right. right but with but, guest appearances on yeah. other Law and Order shows. But that he also played that same character on Sesame Street. And I'm pretty sure he played the yeah. same character on The X Files. I mean, it's just yeah. on and on. And so it interconnects a lot of these shows. And then when you get other people coming in, and it just. So it's great. If you if you look this up online, there's a website that tracks all the different shows in the Tommy Westfall universe and how they're interconnected. Okay. That's that's an interesting that's an interesting thing. I you know, I, I, I remember Tommy Westfall in the last episode with the mm -hmm. with the uh, snow globe, but mm -hmm. but I never heard of the Tommy Westfall universe. So that mm -hmm. that's that's something we could look up and yep. that which makes Doctor Who related to all the law and orders. And Sesame Street Thomas, uh, and Star Trek and Star so Trek, on. Sesame Street. Yep. I mean, it's all mm -hmm. it's all in universe. It's it's an amazing yep. thing. Yeah. Yep. Um, but it's not in universe with World War Z. I don't know. We'll have to go and check and see there if there's some Capaldi connection. Is a is you know unless it was pre -regener regeneration with Pat Smith could be. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a it's a thing to look at after that. Um, so uh, let's go to any music references besides that band mm -hmm. that you can think of with with Doctor Who. I mean, we've done video games, we've done movies, we've done TV. Yeah. yeah. The only thing left is music that we really yeah. hasn't haven't. Talked yeah, and, about. I, and I mentioned John Pertwee's "I Am the Doctor," and I, I swear right. that Fraser Hines did one about Daleks. Yeah. Uh, um, I'm sure there's some rock bands that have worked in references. I know of oh, a few sure. Star Trek references that have been done. Yeah, yeah. Um, Let's, everyone, we're all googling right now for for those of you who are uh, look say what well, <laughs> look why everyone's down right now well and so. while we're doing that googling i'll just mention something i discovered while i was doing a panel on the uh wilderness years a few years ago of course ian levine very famously put together a bunch of c and d list music pop stars back in the uh hiatus period along with colin baker nicola bryant nicholas courtney and anthony Ailey, did the song called doctor in distress if you check the liner notes on that record Hans Zimmer did the composition for it. Oh, I love Hans Zimmer. Yeah. There's a song called The Daleks by Murray Gold. Hmm, Murray Gold. I wonder what oh. he's done before. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, it's for the, you know, but it's, I mean, it's obviously, you know, like for things, but like. Sure. Yeah. Obviously with the music for them, but still. But I'm not seeing anything from Frasier. But hey, that doesn't mean it's not there. Sure. Doctor Who references in non-series music. Um, there is a band that is currently composed of MC 
Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a guy called Cool Hill Janitor uh, says one of these days by Pink Floyd is inspired by the theme music. Hmm. And they've, uh, I think Jimmy Page has said it uh, specifically that they kind of stole it. Oh, there's a there's a TARDIS in the album art for Iron Maiden Somewhere in Time. <laughs> I think Iron Maiden also very famously did a song uh, that referenced the prisoner quite a bit. Um, Tigger Poo <laughs> says, enjoy the sounds by Depeche Mode if you listen to the words. It clearly sounds like Series six of Doctor Who when Amy gives birth to Melody and the silence mm. were featured. But you're Emily just not gonna re- you're not you're not gonna remember this song. All I ever wanted, all I ever needed is here in my arms. And sounds like Amy. Hmm. Slime when when she delivers Melody or River. So that's just some stuff from uh my phone's ringing and I can't get up. Yeah. So that's just some things from a, from a forum on digital spies. Mm -hmm. There have of course been a lot of comedy skits in Britain over the years that have Uh parodied or referenced Dr. Who. I mean, obviously we've got dead ringers, John Colshaw going around as Tom Baker or prank calling people or prank in person, you know, in person, they've also done some lovely Torchwood skits. Um, David Tennant appeared on the Catherine Tate show after her run as Donna Noble. Oh, God, I love that. Lauren's new English teacher. (laughs) Are you speaking Scottish, sir? (laughs) Are you the doctor? Those two are are golden together. Yeah. Lenny Henry um, very famously played the doctor in his comedy show some years ago, long before he was in Spyfall. um, He uh, was even dressed in a costume that was somewhat reminiscent of Collins. Uh, Jim Broadbent had done Doctor Who skits, and this is prior to Curse of Fatal Death. Um, yeah, but famously, I mean, there's the um, the, the film, uh, the uh, was it the uh, the charity film made for the for um, what's the the uh, comedy day? What comic is, relief called in Europe for Red Nose Day. Comic relief. Mm-hmm. Red Nose Day uh, with with all these people uh, brought in. To, oh, you're, you're talking about the, the let's even Moffat Joanna story. Doctor Lumley was one the of curse the of doc- fatal death. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the curse of the fatal death. I mean, yeah, that's what, a, never that's cruel nor cowardly. If you go back and watch Doctor and the Curse of Fatal Death now, you will see the seeds of Stephen Moffat's run as showrunner in that story. Ah, I mean, it's done good. for comedy, but but there's a lot of seeds of what he would end up doing with Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi. <laughs> Okay. Yep. So uh, back to uh, but I mean that's that whole that whole show that whole I mean if you call Time Crash a, a a reference since it wasn't part of Doctor Who it was just a you know what I mean mm-hmm. are the the parody a Made for comic relief references or all my what you want to call those that's the other thing and of course i mean one of the four one of one of david and george's four kids is going to be cast as a doctor one of these when they get older oh ty Tennant. yeah oh yeah well there, there's a pop culture reference right yeah. there so David Tennant father is married, and a grandfather. married to Peter Davison's daughter who played his own <laughs> daughter in an father. episode of Doctor Who. So <laughs> Wibbly Wobbly Timey Wimey and Sesty Westy. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, come on, Ty Tennant. Come on. Your dad was the doctor. Your grand, your grand, your gramps was a doctor. And your, well, your, and your mom another. was cloned from the doctor. So <laughs> <laughs> that that's going to yeah. be in a, in a different that's going to be at a different uh, panel. So yeah, stay tuned yeah. for another panel yeah. that, that you're going to hear from us. Yeah. Or 
this might there, go on before interestingly us, yeah. there also no, have it's... been some interesting pop culture references inside doctor who to other things mm -hmm. you know, oh, obviously we know about the beatles appearing on yeah. top of the pops in um the chase but like mm -hmm. in um david douglas adams stories he sprinkles in references the hitchhiker's guide to the galaxy uh, when Tom Baker is dangling down a, that pit in Destiny of the Daleks, hanging from his scarf or whatever, he passes the time, pulls out a book. And he's reading one of Ulan Kalufid's books. <laughs> so they sneak things in where they can there too. I mean, I, I mean, mean uh, Moffat area. I think they did quite a bit more of that, but in in Blink, there's. I mean, yeah. the video stars. They pick the video, the the movie for a sp for a specific reason. Oh yeah. That uh, that uh, I forgot what the movie is. Yeah, well, movie. and the, the modern era is full of pop culture references to outside of Doctor Who, yeah. but but even in the classic era, there's a few, so kind of fun. Uh, what was it the uh, the master watching children's program? Was it the Clangers in, in like the Sea Devils and being quite amused by it? I mean, there's little things like that. Um, yeah, and and. Um, I gotta say, I do love Doctor Who mashups when people do things like that. In fact, I'm wearing one of my mashup T-shirts right now. It's uh, you know Matt Smith era and the Power Puff Girls, you know, with the, yeah, you know River and Amy and Clara, and I've got a David Tennant version yeah. of this as well. Um, but uh, on YouTube, very famously, several years ago, there there was this really well done uh, mashup called the Doctor Games where uh -huh. the doctors are playing the hunger games basically the master and the daleks conspired and put them into the hunger games and so it's all 12 and a half doctors so you've got a john hurt and a peter capaldi and this is right after capaldi was cast so they're playing him kind of like malcolm tucker in that <laughs> yeah. oh nice so lots they, of bleeps yes did, and, did, and when they and when they do the countdown that. When they do the countdown at the beginning, you know, it's 12, and they're looking at the faces, 12, 11, 10, 9, and they get to John Hurt, eight and a half or something. <laughs> <laughs> on from there, you know, and it's it's brutal, you know, it's it's like that brutal killing thing from the Hunger Games, but it's done in a very silly Doctor Who style, you know, Tom Baker's like slingshotting jelly babies at David Tennant with a scarf, and Peter Davison kills somebody with a celery, and <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's great. It's short. It's it's a beautiful video. Um, it's one of the better ones I've seen done. So, yeah. Also, another little fun, all of fun uh, pop culture reference, I suppose, of sorts. Uh, several years ago, the cast of Gotham were posting pictures of themselves dressed up for Halloween, and so the fellow that was playing Jim Gordon in the series was dressed as Commissioner Gordon with gray hair and a mustache. Sean Pertwee. <laughs> posted pictures of himself dressed as the third doctor. He threw a wig on, threw his dad's costume on, and he looked the part. <laughs> it's even yeah, it poses was and all. It was, it was nice. But no car. No car. He, he no was, car. Oh. I, think he, I think he was shooting the pictures either from his own living room or from Bruce Wayne's living room. I mean, it was, <laughs> yeah. Wait, I, we got a question in the chat from from our uh, chat moderator, uh, mm -hmm. Natasha. What is your favorite thing about finding Doctor Who in other media? I think I said it, the popping up of it just out of the blue. When you're watching a show that you don't think is going to have a reference. You know, if you watch Big Bang Theory or any other shows like that or Community, you know you're going to expect one. But if you're watching... A, a police procedural or a doctor show or a medical show and a doctor who reference pops up. It's great. It just pops up out of the blue and you don't expect it. How about uh, Michael? Do you have any, I, I think, thing about I that? think the th for me, it's the, it's the representation, um, the recognition of us as fans, you know, it's a, clearly there's other fans working on these shows and they're recognizing us as well. How about you, Diana? I always get a huge yay kind of sound and clapping, and my husband just looks at me like, what? Because I also do the same thing for Star Trek, so he kind of doesn't know which <laughs> what I'm referring to, but he usually will catch the Star Trek ones <laughs> as well. So um, now after this uh, discussion, what, what uh, 
are you gonna go watch try to find something that has something you didn't you didn't know existed that you're gonna go watch one of those uh references go try to find one of those shows with a reference uh michael you go try to find anything new that we brought up today <clears throat> i i don't know that i'm gonna go looking for anything specific there's so much backlog of stuff i haven't watched that yeah. i'm sure i'll come across more things with time i'll just i am i might actually go back and revisit that enterprise episode i mentioned just because it's been a while since i've watched that run of enterprise how about you, Diana? Are you going to go try to find any uh, stuff that we mentioned today? Uh, no, because I, again, I have such a backlog. It was hard enough to fit in flux <laughs> yeah. because I was on vacation when it started yeah. and then it's on AMC plus and it's like, I can't, but and I, need, for, um, I need to rewatch the flux in its entirety in the next week so that I'm ready to do a panel. Yeah. So do, soon. Yeah, so do I. So. I, but yeah, it's just, I don't, it this just to find time for for flux was hard okay. enough like i said i'm gonna go try to find that uh top gear episode and watch that just because it's got star wars and it's star trek and and uh doctor who and and uh flash gordon all in one episode so how can he go wrong with something like that mm. so uh we're gonna we got about three or four minutes left let's wrap it up with um let's just say what your favorite doctor who reference that you've ever seen was michael i i don't know if it would be a favorite but that reference on jeopardy the hairstyling thing was just so off the wall and different and it was such a weird place to find a doctor who reference that it's got a special place in my heart how about I you don't... diana I you don't have really a have half the half of this is like oh yeah that's right but I don't really always remember it I guess maybe if I have to pick it's going to have to be the, like all the uh, references and good omens because that's yeah. I've watched that so many times already <laughs> and then then me uh, leverage um, when whenever Hardison brought up Doctor Who names and things like that and and the look he gets from from the other people from um, the Christian King character, uh, Elliot Spencer, and just that kind of stuff. When people are reacting to Doctor Who fandom in that way and they just give them the disc back, it's great. I mean, it's uh, that's one of my always been some of my favorite stuff. Uh, just when someone disses your fandom and you have the last word, it's always fun. So uh, that's going to wrap us up for this uh, panel and uh, just go have fun watching our panels during the, during this, uh, during this convention and we'll see you next time and bye everyone.